Okay, so in this video, we're gonna be making an EV environment. It's gonna be very dark and foggy. Uh, side note, if you make this render, send it to me on Instagram. This is my Instagram here. It's gonna be linked in the description. Put it on your Instagram story and post it, and then I will repost you on here on the uh, highlight. So let's get into the tutorial. So first thing we're gonna do, shift A and let's add a plane. Okay, have your plane selected, hit S8, bring it all the way up. Okay, so this is what we're gonna be working with. Let's go ahead and make the triangle. So it's not really a triangle, it's more of a cube. So just bring it right up here, just slightly above our plane and then hit tab, go up here to face select and then select the bottom one. Let's see if we can get it here. So select the bottom one, I'm gonna to try to get under there and get it, there we go. And I'm gonna just hold down S and scale it all the way down like that. So it's kind of a triangle. There's triangle faces, but you know. Just a quick tip on design. Triangles are really, really interesting for sci-fi style things. Just the triangle is kind of a mysterious shape, so a little tip for you when it comes to designing things. Okay, so let's send our triangle all the way to the back here. It's gonna be at the end of our animation. I mean, I mean scene, not animation. We will be animating it later. All right, now let's set up our camera. So shift A, let's put a camera in here, and then let's try to set it up right here in the middle and then control alt zero and I'm gonna hit R and rotate a little bit and just move it around just a little bit and hit R twice okay we're gonna have that there for now alright let's go into lighting and the design so first right here on the little camera icon go from cycles to EV if you're not there already and then let's add shift A and just add a point light and then hit Z and go to rendered view now that we have this, let's set up our EV settings first. So I'm just going to turn everything off and turn on what everything that we need. So let's turn on volumetric, screen space reflections, bloom, and ambient occlusion. So this is all the stuff that we're going to need. A lot of people forget about the bloom thing, and that's one of the coolest things, in my opinion, about EV. It's this bloom. Okay, so let's take our light here and just bring it up and above our triangle. Another thing, you can kind of see what's going on here. Make sure in your shadows that soft shadows are enabled. Okay, so now we have this. Let's go up to the world settings and make our sky black. All right, so now we need to add the texture that we created for this triangle. So let's go up here to the shading preset and let's make that. So click new and then we're gonna add a mix shader right here and then we're going to add an emission shader bring it down here plug this into that i'm going to make my strength at 50 and my color teal kind of blue all right now we need to tell blender where to place these two shaders so first let's add a color ramp plug that into the factor and then we're going to add two nodes first to the voronoi plug the color into the factor and then right now if we go to the render view you can kind of see what's going on so we need to right now it's the Voronoi texture we want it to sort of look kind of slimy or very organic so we're going to add a Musgrave texture plug the color into the vector so now we have this we need to make this a little bit more contrasty if that's even a word so let's go to the color ramp and bring the black just like that added some more contrast and let's make the scale a little bit smaller. And then two more nodes so that we can animate this later. A mapping node. So plug the vector into the vector and a texture coordinate. And plug the generated into the vector. So now later on we're gonna take this and animate it like that, but I'll show you that a little bit later. So now when we hit rendered, we can see what's going on here. Let's make our light uh, a similar blue to our shader so right about there and let's move on I don't like this shadow that's happening here so I'm just gonna take my light and bring it right up here until we don't have that shadow and make our color just a little bit more that way alright now let's make the floor texture so I'm gonna scale it down a little bit kinda like that bring it this way so that it just touches the edge of our camera just like that and let's go to the shading preset 
and all right so let's add a noise and this will be the basis of all the shading we do to this so let's add a color ramp plug the color and for this color ramp we're gonna plug it into the roughness and then we're gonna add a bump node Plug the normal into the normal and this noise texture into the height. And then we just need to put a color ramp right there, right in the middle of those. All right, so let's take our noise texture, up the detail, bring the scale down a little bit. And then right here on the bump color ramp, let's make some puddles. So let's bring it right like that. And then to make the puddles here, now that it's plugged into the roughness, we're gonna bring the black this way. And then we're gonna try, so basically the white is the least amount of roughness. And so that's gonna be this area. And then the black is gonna be this very reflective area. So we need to bring this over here. You can kind of see what's going on. So you can just watch the texture. As I do it, we're making it less and less rough. So bring it there, bring it this way, kind of like that. And then as we do it, as we bring it, we're going to make it more. You can kind of see it happening here. Make it more and more extreme until it looks like water is going up to the rocks. Now you can see it more extreme. So the water is kind of going up to the rocks. So we want it just like that. And then let's just up the scale on our noise and just give it a little bit of distortion. So now we've made this really interesting floor texture. It looks like mud and it's kind of disgusting. And that's what we're going for. All right, next we need to add another light. So bring this point light here, bring it all the way here and make it red. So we don't want it in the scene. As you can see in the reflection, it's just a sort of sun like looking ball. And you can have that if you want, it looks kind of cool, but I don't want that. So we're gonna bring it over here. All right, next we're gonna add our volume. It kind of looks like there's volume because of the bloom, but that's fake volume. And we want real volume so that we can see it everywhere. So let's go to mesh, add a cube, or take our cube, scale it all the way up till it passes up the camera and passes up our plane. So that's where we want it. And then click on your cube, give it a principled volume. Now we need to go up to the shader editor, go to the principled volume, give it a density of 0 0.1 and change the volume to the volume. And now we have some real volume to play with. So now it's just looks way more atmospheric. And I'm gonna bring down the strength of this orange to me about five. And we just need, this is just to give it some color accent, make it a little bit more interesting. And yeah, I think placing it right there is pretty good. And I'm gonna increase the strength a little bit. Okay, so there is some indirect lighting going on in the scene, but it's not being registered because that's how Eevee works. So we need to add a light probe, a reflection cube map, and scale it all the way up till it passes up the cube. Right about, I mean, passes up the plane. And then let's go to our EV settings. And right here on indirect lighting, click bake indirect lighting. And now we have some indirect lighting going on in this area right here. Just adds a little bit, bit more zing, I guess you could call it, to this render. Okay, now we need to animate this triangle and the shader going on inside of the triangle. Right down here for the end frames, let's give it 120 frames for now. We're going to change that a bit later, but just to give for a reference. Now click on your triangle, and right here on the Z rotation, we're going to animate that. But let's just make sure our keyframe interpolation is at linear. So go to your, go to edit, preferences, right here on animation. Make sure it's on linear and not bezier. Now let's animate it. So right here, click the keyframe button. Click this arrow right here, and then click the right arrow once. We need to make sure to do that because if you keep it here, this frame and this frame will be the same thing, and you'll have a one frame pause, and then it won't be seamless. So just click the right arrow once, and then we'll give it 360 degrees so that it r rotates. And then now we have this rotating triangle. I don't like how you can, can't really see the edges of the triangle, so I'm going to give it a wireframe really quick. Give it a wireframe, uncheck replace original, Let's add a metallic shader to this. Make it metallic, keep it at that color. We're gonna go back to the wireframe, give it a material offset of two. And when you do that, it assigns the wireframe to 
the it assigns the material to that wire. Otherwise, if you keep it at zero, it just assigns everything. So put two, and that means it's assigning the second material in this list. And so now you can see a gap. All right, I'm gonna click on the swirly emissive shader. I'm gonna go back to the shader editor and we're gonna animate this. So now we're gonna go to this mapping node and I'm gonna animate it. I think I wanna animate it on the X. It looks better. Okay, so we need to bring up the timeline. So right down here, you'll see the little plus icon forming where your cursor is. Once that happens, drag up, and then I'm gonna go click right here and click timeline. And so now we have 120 frames right here. Now what's gonna happen is the animation is gonna be too fast to look good, but I'm just gonna demonstrate that. So I'm gonna right click on the Y, insert keyframes. I'm gonna click it, do the right arrow, and then right here on Y, I'm gonna hit 360, and then insert keyframes. And you'll see, it's just way too fast. It doesn't look good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add 120 frames times two. So that'll be 240 frames. And that's very important because we're gonna make sure that when this is rotating, we can keep it there. I'll show you that in the graph editor in just a second, but we need to keep our math correct. So it'll be 240, put it there. And then I'm gonna right click, clear keyframes, and we're gonna redo that animation. And then we're gonna type in 360, enter. And then now we have a much better looking animation. It's a little bit slower and you can kind of see what's going on. Now let's deal with the fact that this rotation stops. Being that the math is correct, you could just add, you could just make it, I believe it would be 720 degrees, but I don't want to do that. There's a cool trick in Blender when you go to the animation tab here, I'm gonna zero this out, go to render. Okay, so right up here, I'm gonna switch it to the graph editor and I'm gonna show you a little cycle trick so that because the math is correct, we can just tell it to keep repeating the motion we already gave it. You'll see in the graph editor has this stuff. Right here on object transforms, click on Z Euler rotation. I think it's pronounced Euler, I'm not sure. So click that. So right here, you'll see this tab, bring that over, click on modifiers, and then right here on add modifier, click cycles. And so now it's just gonna, right here you can see, it's just cycling that animation infinitely, and this is our 240 frames. So whenever we go through it, right here in the end, it just keeps going. And then because our math is correct, when we go to the end of that frame, we can click play, boom, we go back to the end. It's a perfect loop. Okay, so now we have this. Last thing we need to do is add our character. So we're gonna do that at Mixamo. Okay, they just started mowing outside. I apologize if you can hear that, but I can't restart this tutorial, so we're just gonna we're just gonna roll through that. <laughs> Okay, so this is Mixamo. I'm gonna link it in the description. It is a free service that Adobe provides. You don't even have to have an Adobe account. Just make your own account here. You don't have to pay for anything. And so up here, I'm gonna to go to characters and I'm gonna pick, I'm gonna pick this halo looking character. So this is him. Now you can go over here and pick an animation and I just want one of him standing. So I'm gonna type that in and I'm gonna pick the one that says idle. And that's what we have going on here. So once you've picked the animation you want, click download, and we're gonna pick uh, Kadala, D-A-E. I'm not sure if that's how it's pronounced. We're having a lot of problems with pronouncing things today. I apologize. But uh, right here, a format, and then frames per second, switch it to 24, and we're gonna download that. Okay, so we're back in Blender. Let's import that, so that'll be file, import, Kalada, or something. <laughs> I'm just gonna intentionally mispronounce it at this point. Um, so we're gonna click idle here, and then we're gonna pick our guy right here. So now we have him. Just to clarify, in the last environment tutorial I made, we had a problem where the textures weren't importing correctly. So switch to the Kalida um, format, and everything imports just fine, including the animation. So now we're just gonna scale this guy down a little bit. And this looks about, about right. Looks good, and here we go. This is the animation. Just a tip on these, if you wanna move him, 
up here, make sure you click on armature and everything follows it. They're all kind of parented to him. So do that and everything will move correctly. If you don't do that, it, it goes crazy. So now this is the final animation to render it. Click on this little printer icon right down here where it says output on PNG. Switch to FFmpeg video, save it to wherever you want. Click on encoding and change it to MP4. And then right up here, you would click render animation. So there you go. You made another environment. Hopefully you're following my environment tutorials. I think I have one more. I might have two, but that's in my channel. If you want to go check that out, I'll link that one in the description as well. So yeah, thanks for watching.